What's up everybody? Welcome to a new Redbubble video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how do you know for sure if a certain concept, a certain niche, a certain keyword is actually selling on Redbubble without any kind of data to prove. When I say data to prove, it's not like Redbubble comes out with their own search volume tool that shows how much search volume for each keyword that comes out, even though that would be very, very nice. Uh, that doesn't exist. Now, you can use a Google search volume tool, but that doesn't reflect 100% of the search traffic that actually occurs on Redbubble. Here we have three keywords, the keyword beekeeper, we have the keyword honeybee, and we have the keyword faith. And my question to you guys, do you think that people search for keywords around these concepts, beekeeper, honeybee, and faith, and actually make money or actually end up purchasing, which makes money to the sellers? That's my question to you guys. Do you think that that's the case? Now, my answer is yes, and I actually have a firm stance and a firm belief as to why, um, but it comes down to a basic rule of business. When And honestly, a basic rule of human beings in general. When human beings find something that works, guess what? They do it. They do more of it. They do it again and again and again and again. And evolution has actually showed this to us over time, right? Now, I could give a whole bunch of examples, but I'm not even going to get into that because this is not a science class. But at the end of the day, we are sellers on Redbubble. When we typically find something that sells well, right, and we sells more and more of it, after a week, after a month, after a year, and we're just getting consistent sales, eventually we're going to have a light bulb moment. Something's going to go off in our head and say, oh, wait, if this sells, I should make more of it, right? And this is actually a tip that I've told you guys to do before. Everybody has these light bulb moments when we figure things out by ourselves, right, without you know, any kind of help or without any kind of knowledge, we just get get some ideas on some, you know, skills and tactics that we can improve on. I mean, that's only natural, right? Essentially, we're getting better as we go. Well, in this case, as sellers on Redbubble, not just us, but all the other sellers, you got to realize that these keywords weren't as once as they as large as they are now, right? So, for example, the keyword honeybee. Maybe three years ago, it was a quarter of this size. Maybe three years ago, it was a tenth of this size, right? The keyword faith, maybe three years ago or four years ago or five years ago, whatever the amount of years is, maybe the niche was, you know, one twentieth of its size. What happens is, is that these red bubble sellers, guys, as they're selling over time, they have those light bulb moments. They say, oh, wow, this sells. Let me create more of it. And guess what? They go out there and they make more and they make more and they make more. And what happens is, is you have individuals kind of like this, this profile right here, Laurel, who created two designs in this exact same category, three designs rather, right? And I bet you that person has even more designs, right? What happens is, is when you're a w when you have a winning idea on Redbubble, and you think that you're doing well, you're gonna create more of what it is. So if you're curious ever as a seller, if you picked a certain keyword, you're just not sure uh, if if it's gonna sell, if there's any search demand. Look at your competitors. At the end of the day, there wouldn't be a lot of competitors if it wasn't a profitable niche. This is why when guys, when we, uh, you know, back in the day when I, you know. I used to talk about blogging and things like that. A lot of people used to say, go for the, the you know, uncharted niches, the uncharted territories. I used to say the opposite. I used to say, go for the niches that are actually competitive because that's how you know there's money there. And then what you want to do is you want to go for the uncharted keywords, right? And so I take the same approach to Redbubble. And I've taught this in the autopilot passive income Redbubble course, right? The Redbubble tagging course specifically. I've said specifically in the course, and I've actually said this for free as well, uh, but I've taught the concept more on, on the course, is when you find a keyword that is competitive, you want to find the less competitive versions of that keyword, right? And there are small alterations to that keyword, but the, what happens is, is when a keyword is less competitive, 
most of the time, competition goes down, and search volume also goes down. It's kind of like a, uh, uh, you know, synonymous kind of thing that kind of happens. But what happens is for you is you're increasing the probability of being successful. Because if you think about it, let's say you take a keyword and put it in the, in the, in the, in the competition for the word faith here, right? You add the word faith to your tags. Well, good. You're in the competition for the word faith. But if you look at it, there's 297,000 results. If I refresh this, right, 297, 756 results. If I refresh this, maybe the number will go up literally right now. I thought it was going to, but it it's going to go up. I mean, by the minute, by the hour, these numbers are going up, right? The fact that they're going up means that there's money to be made in that area. There's blood in the water. There's sharks in the water. They're ready to eat. They're ready to hunt. My point is you got to find those low or less comp competitive keywords around this keyword. Now, I can't unfortunately show how that works here because I featured it all in the course. But my point is, is that you don't need necessarily a keyword research tool. Now, keyword research tools help. Don't get me wrong. And I've actually featured how to use that here in the course. But you don't need it. You just have to think logically. A lot of the times after using the keywords, the keyword tools, the softwares, all that, you start to get the hang of it and you actually start to get your own assumption on things. And your assumption ends up being validated if you check it out. Like something I say is the more I do this, right, the more I'm, I'm just almost like aware, almost like I can look in a bird's eye view uh, up ahead into the future and, and know with confidence if something is going to sell or not. That's why I've said you got to be able to look at a design and tell right away if it's going to sell, if it has the potential to sell, not only based on design quality, but based on the competition, what it's drawing in, right? What tags does it have? What titles does it have? Because all that plays a part in the competition, right? Assuming that you're not using a competitive advantage, which shout out to yesterday's video about the competitive advantage. We talked all, a whole thing about that, right? And right? You just got to be aware of these things. So if I go over here to the newest designs, not necessarily the best selling or anything like that, it will show us literally the newest designs that are posted, right? And so for me, I could tell this design right away on a mouse pad is not going to sell. It's just, it's the, the, the main core of the design, right? Is too small, too skinny, too, you know, it doesn't get enough attention. The whole big blue um, mouse pad just takes away from it. The colors of the actual design have blue in it. It shouldn't have been, like, honestly, it just, just shouldn't look this way. But if maybe they put a sticker as as the thumbnail point of view, maybe you have a better chance of selling in that case. Or let's say, let's take this product, for example. This rainbow with a hat. The text is too small for anybody to be able to read. This design is not going to sell. I could tell, once again, right away. It's just, it's way too small. Let's go back, right? Let's take a look at this. I can tell this will sell. Not only is it a beautiful piece of art, right? But it's large. It's I can see it. It's not pixelated. Somebody's going to buy this, right? You got to have that intuition. The more you do the work behind it, the better you'll do. Look at this design. This design is beautiful. This will sell, right? You can just tell. It fills up the screen. It looks attractive. It, now, it could take a year to sell, it could take six months to sell, five months to sell, a week to sell. Nobody really knows about how long it will take, but it's bound to sell, right? So what I'm trying to say is you have to have that intuition. You have to have that natural ability to be able to figure out, you know, what's going to be able to sell in that specific niche, right? Now, I'm speaking purely from a quality perspective. Remember that there are two core aspects, two foundations to Redbubble success. The first one is the design quality, and the second one is the uh, traffic quality. And traffic quality is controlled by a few things. You can control it by titling and tagging. You can control it by the competitive advantage, like I've spoken about. The Instagram bots, as a perfect example, is a competitive advantage that brings in traffic. It can, you can control it by doing keyword research, SEO research, right? You can do it by improving traffic from uh, the quality of the sources that you have by optimizing your tags. So, for example, if I have this keyword, picture of Jesus here, and a lion, right? If I add the picture, if I add the keyword, let's say yoga, 
this photo doesn't match the keyword yoga, right? And so if I add it in my tags and people end up seeing the keyword yoga, uh, they search for yoga and they see something like this, they're just going to glance over it because this has nothing to do with yoga, right? So what's going to happen is, is that's going to decrease my sales. That relates to conversion rate. So that's when I say, you know, quality of traffic. The quality of traffic on the keyword yoga is not high quality traffic because it has nothing to do with yoga, right? The buyer intent has something to do with yoga. Does this buyer intent have anything to do with yoga? The answer is no, right? And while we're actually talking, guys, I just want to point this out. Look at another design was created, right? It was 756, now it's 757. My point here with all this is that there are aspects to success that we need to nail down. We need to be 100% certain about. One of those things will, well, not one of those things, but most of those things come over time through experience, through hard work, right? That's why a lot of people, when I say it takes a lot of hard work to become successful, they get confused. And I remember somebody asked me, he said, really, do you think it has to be that hard? The answer is yes, because if you want to get to the top of the group, you want to be at the 1%, the 5%. It's not going to happen by getting there by luck or by just luckily be pl be placed there. No, it's going to take hard work. I don't care what kind of competition there is. Even if the competition is easy, you're you're moving past over 800,000 sellers. And remember, to the victor goes the spoils. There's only one winner at each moment the customer comes into the website. There's only one winner. You have to keep in mind that. So every time you're creating a new design, every time you're tagging properly, every time you're trying to uh, skimp out on your design, maybe not spend as enough effort, maybe not put in as much quality, maybe not do as much research, realize there can only be one winner. And that motivating fact alone will push you forward. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video helped you out and gave you a clear understanding of my approach here on Redbubble. All right. I'll talk to you later. Peace.